potential achievements, upcoming projects, and uh, I did put in an area for questions at the end. So the financial status right now, this is how your, your taxes are currently broken up. This was covered last year when I went over the budget. And right now you can see that uh, this is all estimated on a, a property of uh, approximately $150,000. So if you're looking at your school tax, roughly 69%. Uh, county is 24%, and then the town is 7%. Start uh, ratcheting that down. Here's, here's your, your price point. Again, this is based on a $150,000 home. Your school taxes are $2,000. $198. You're paying $750.36 in county taxes approximately, and for your town taxes, we're, you're paying roughly $226.65 for all the services delivered by the town of Boston. And again, we're focusing on you know, your county and school. You've got a larger slice of the pie. In the town, you've got the smaller. So now we're really going to, on the next slide, we'll move down to the macro level. Here's how it's all broken down by fund. If you want to really uh, get in get into uh, the finite details, you can always pull up any one of the town of Boston budgets, but as of the, the most recent budget, under the general fund, you're looking at 7% of that $200 of your tax dollars. Highway uh, consumes roughly 27%. Fire is 26%. Uh, your lighting districts, which we do have a few in town, that's roughly 1%. Uh, ambulance, for the service that they provide, that you're paying roughly 3% of that $200 uh, dollar tax uh, levy. And then uh, refuse and garbage, that number is uh, at 21%. And then water for all of our districts is at 15%. <clears throat> Waste management, this was most recently discussed at the last town board meeting. I know it, sorry. Uh, waste management, uh, last year we uh, we discussed our waste management. Bill, those prices are gonna continue, unfortunately, to, to rise. I, I wish I could say something different about that, but right now, the state of the current recycling environment other costs associated with solid waste collection, hauling, disposal, uh, it, it, the prices are escalating. So we put it out to bid. Last year, we could not do another extension, so we did a one-year extension for waste management. The price did increase, went up to $198 per parcel. And again, what we did for all of you to see tonight is that on the bottom of the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll see that with the contract extension from what you're all used to as the citizens of the town, your, your service doesn't change. You're still getting weekly trash recycling, obviously, and in weekly bulk collection, one of the discussions that came up for those that aren't aware is you, uh, two alternates that were brought in by waste management. One was a, uh, a quarterly bulk pickup, and then the other one was a paid for service uh, uh, pickup. So essentially, if you were to replace, I use the example, if you were to pur uh, purchase a new uh, mattress and box spring, you needed to get rid of it. Right now, you put it out at the curb on your uh, selected trash day, and it goes away. Pay, paid service means you pay roughly approximately $25 per item, per large bulk item, and it would go away. It's, it's common all throughout the Northeast. It's a, it's, a, it's a growing trend. I don't know if it's going to come our way, but that was something Waste Management pitched to us. Uh, for those of you on social media, you saw I put a quick post out because this did come up kind of last minute for us in the town. And uh, you know, if you've read the comments, you certainly know that that was not a favorable option based on the feedback of the residents. So going into the new contract, uh, which is a three-year contract, we're looking at $228 per parcel. So that will be the increase uh, showing up. Uh, and uh, no, no other uh, vendors had uh, bid up, uh, made an attempt to bid. Modern submitted a letter uh, respectfully uh, declining the opportunity to bid for the solid waste contract in Boston. Okay, so here's the water dust. This has been a question that has come up over the past year. Uh, we <coughs> look across the bottom line. Uh, if you have the water districts one, water district two, water district three, and we have two extensions. The first extension is in water district two, the second extension is in water district three. We put all the associated balances from 2017, 18, and 19 uh, there, and then on the, uh, the vertical access, access mm -hmm. we, uh, we put the dollar amounts there. Water District 3, obviously, being one of the more newer districts, uh, that's why you're looking at roughly $4.2 million <coughs> in, uh, in balance when it started uh, in 2017, and it's still over $4, uh, $4 million uh, as of right now in 2019. The reason why we put this in, we've got a couple of residents reach out to a couple of the other board members and myself, uh, concerns with water main breaks. I mean, if, if you've experienced that, uh, some of these slides will explain why there's water main breaks. Uh, but I've been working extensively, and other board members are working with uh, Erie County Water Authority. A lot of our, our 
infrastructure that's in the ground when it comes to the lines is either cast iron or ductile iron. They don't survive well, uh, and they're not designed for longevity. They were put in when they were. It's not that anybody did anything wrong. It's just a completely different type of material. And over by Eden in the past, let's say, 12 to 18 months, you'll see that there was a lot of water lines that were put in over there. That's all PVC plants. You're, you're going to get many more years out of that, and that is a transition phase that we should be looking at now uh, and be proactive on that. That's, and again, that's something we'll be looking at. But again, that's a lot of money going into the ground. It's not a nice building in a town of Boston, but it's a lot of money going into our infrastructure so we can actually have water in a town of Boston. Another little breakdown uh, for our water depths. Uh, you look at water, water district number one, we're looking at a payoff in 2023, water district two, 2022, and water district three with that over four million dollars of debt, we're looking at a uh, payoff of 2048. And then your extensions again, uh, we're looking at 2022 payoff and a 2032 payoff. Going over the departmental accomplishments, uh, We'll take a moment. Uh, we do have our assessor who joined us. We do have our new rec director that joined us. We've got a couple other department heads here tonight. Uh, so I thank them for all their feedback and the information contributing to, to these, some of these upcoming slides. Uh, under finance, right now we filed the annual update document, or F, sometimes known as or heard as the AUD, uh, and, and the tax cap before the respective deadlines. We switched payroll companies to minimize payroll errors before uh, this actually a transition that happened roughly now, about from two years ago. That the town had used paychecks. We had some, uh, some problems with pay, uh, payroll, and we went to a local company uh, called uh, Computer Search Payroll. Their logo is down at the bottom left hand corner uh, to fix some of those errors, and so far we've been very happy with them. And it also helps streamline some of our internal processes. Jason, is there any um, look into the future to do payroll in house? For the cost, but doing cost benefit analysis, for them to do all of the billing and W-2s and everything else, it's actually about almost on par. There's, I will say there's a little bit more expense, but we're, you're talking fractions of anyway, spray break right now. So they have full-time goalkeeper do payroll that has a software system in place? Well, we have logic software, but to do the, to add in and to do, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll let Ellie speak to that. So we, the we payroll module, as you know, is a separate cost, too, which is you're paying for the software to do it through logic, so you're paying for the software to do it through computer systems. Research adds in the benefit of their filing the taxes so that we don't have to do it. And if something is messed up in the filing of the taxes, it comes back on computer search rather than on the town. Um, so I mean, I do all the other processing on the payroll. I take the time cards, I put them into the system, I'm responsible for all that. I do the retirement reporting, I do the deferred count reporting, I do all of the other issues and all other processes for that. So that is still in house. Well, we paid for that system many years ago, and it's a working system. It just needs annual maintenance. And the annual maintenance costs cannot be more than paychecks. I would, I don't know. It's just an avenue to, you know, if you're full-time, you should be able to do that. I mean, I did it. How many hours did it take you to do it? It didn't take that long. It's just very obvious. What, well, I can say, well, here's what I can tell you. That was actually a decision, truthfully, that came from me. So, Going back way before Gresham Malucky and even Ali even worked for the town, Ali working for Gresham Malucky, now a direct report to me. Uh, there is a there's an accounting firm, uh, I'll leave names out of this for now, a uh, local accounting firm, and then we also utilized uh, another vendor. During those transitions, there's a lot of, if anybody's spoken to me, you will hear it, and I will happy to be happy to tell you. There's a lot of bookkeeping issues that came up. The amount of time that it's taken and the reason Gresham Malucky still is being paid by with your taxpayer dollars because we needed to clean up our books. Just two, maybe a month and a half ago, we can finally say that our books actually balance out the tile problem. There was a huge undertaking that we had taken on. So to do payroll and some of those other things, truthfully, from a town standpoint, that was the efficient process. And I, I, will, I will stand here and say that all of you that was a decision that we, we made together, uh, but it was the best use of everybody's time, and I will not shy away from the fact that there's actually quite a bit more work to be done. Uh, some, some things happened, and uh, uh, if anybody wants to talk to me offline, I don't mean to take it in an offline scenario, but I truly could probably speak to about a, on, on this topic for probably another 10 to 15 minutes, if not longer. So you know, we got some issues in the town, and uh, they're, they're, we're in a much better place than we, than we want to be. So, uh, we implemented a monthly budget to actual reports to provide uh, to the town board uh, our, our, our 
internal system, actually the Catholic was speaking to, uh, does a different view. So now the, uh, the town the town board members and I, which used to be called the supervisor report, they can actually see how uh, each of the charges that are coming into each of the respective lines on the budget are actually uh, billed to each of those line items. So it gives them a lot better uh, a lot, a lot better understanding of how those charges are coming in and how it affects the overall uh, process in the budget. Uh, again, as I mentioned a few months ago, uh, we've been working with Treasury and Electric up to 27, uh, 27, 2017 financial and get the bank reconciliations up to date. Uh, we're also working on compiling a complete capital asset inventory. Uh, obviously, if you uh, paid attention to the media, there was, a, there was an audit that was done. Uh, there was questions on the, uh, the inventory, the capital asset process, the listings, the filings, the paperwork. Uh, and that is actually finally, I can tell you, it's almost all done. We've got a comprehensive list. The inventory is currently going on department by department right now. Uh, we actually have professional women working on that. And we're going around and making sure everything asset bags and we will be compliant if, uh, if the New York State uh, controller came in and uh, performed an audit on the town of Austin. Of course, last year um, I brought in uh, a new bookkeeper, which is Ellie. Uh, Ellie did work for Russian Malecki. Uh, she, she has the auditing background and expertise for that position, which decreased the use of the outside accounting services, which was before it was exclusively Russian Malecki at a completely different price point than the salary that Interest for the 2019 <clears throat> total of $19,532 through May. And we're also looking into investment and purchasing options to help keep taxes low. And some of the things that we've implemented is uh, we've actually found simple things that we can all relate to at a personal level. Amazon, uh, you'd be amazed at how many office supplies and other things that the town of Boston purchases. We can get actually cheaper on Amazon. So I work with Amazon, actually through Amazon Business. We have a government relations uh, account representative. And what, what we've done is we structure where every town of Boston uh, department email uh, goes through essentially almost a check and balance. The department head can order whatever supplies need, toner, paper, pens, pencils, et cetera. If it's cheaper than, let's say, uh, uh, eating off a supply or whatever, what have you, that email and that order list is then kicked up to either uh, the bookkeeper's office or my office. Right now I've been maintaining it. And uh, we, ver we verify what it is, make sure that there's funding in there, and we, we approve it. And then uh, one of the other Next steps is a credit card that we uh, cash back uh, payments on out of those charges. So now we're using that, that mm -hmm. charge card, and you play the game, which I will admit I do personally in my life. Uh, if you use a card for a cash back award, you pay off the bills at the end of the month, you're not paying interest on it, but you can get cash back to the dividends. So now we can take that money, we're spending taxpayer money, we can take that money, bring it in as what's referred to as an unanticipated revenue, and that's that's cash on the barrel line for us. So now we can actually use that to buy off the thing. That so I can pay for a salary, let's say, for example, but we can use that to offset some of our other costs and keep our costs low, especially now that the tax cap is permanent here, say, uh, with the governor's new money. Uh, grants, this is something that actually when I came in, we've worked on a lot, we've been working, doing a lot of grant work. Uh, FEMA, right now, we've had uh, $111,499 received from the FEMA uh, relating to the 2018 appeal of 2014 parking lot damage. That goes back to, if you remember, the seven foot snowstorm out there. Seven feet of snow, uh, but uh, that is what we ended up uh, receiving back in the FEMA. Uh, we received $37,166 from the New York State Department of Homeland Security Emergency Services relating to the 2018 appeal on the 2004 14 parking lot damage. And then uh, our annual grant that we receive every year for our summer concert series, we received $1,000 uh, for that from the uh, Arts and Services Initiative of Western New York. Pending grants that are still stay outstanding. Uh, we have a $75,000 DASNY grant. Uh, right now, this was, I've spoken about this earlier in the year, uh, I was really hoping to get some, uh, essentially a generator, to make this a, a shelter for the town of Boston. Uh, a a warming shelter that can't be a, a full-scale full shelter because we don't have a hand of a, a restroom to the facilities. But at least we keep the power on. So if we do have a sun with snowstorm, any of us crucial employees could actually show up to the town hall. We'd have power, we'd have the heat, we'd have water, we'd have what we need. And then of course for the community, but any seniors, et cetera, that need coming for a warning station could have used that. Uh, we've had some other things come up. Uh, we have a boiler from 1972 that sits in our utility room. Uh, the pipes are severely corroded, and uh, we're looking at uh, the lowest price tag I've seen on, on estimates right now. We're looking at uh, anywhere between 80 and well over $100,000 to replace that boiler. And uh, if, we, if we all know, just like our furnace in our home, when is that boiler going to go? It's going to go in the middle of the wintertime. If it goes in the middle of the wintertime, 
uh, the lead time that I'm uh, receiving from the two different companies so far at the month of bid is a set of approximately two to three weeks because we also sold the asbestos uh, installation on the pipe centers and now have to do with asbestos remediation, which also is <coughs> that price that should begin your tax dollar. So we're trying to be very conscious. So while the generator was a nice to do, it was a great idea, and we did, it's, it's, it's out there. That's the need right now. Move down that, uh, move down that route. South Boston playground equipment. South Boston. Uh, if you hadn't heard through the, uh, the town board meetings, we had some uh, children, youth. I'm not sure who. We don't have cameras down our site. I will never know. But uh, they damaged some of our playground equipment. We had to remove some slides and damage you know, our nice facilities that we have. So our highway department went down, made them safe, removed some of the equipment, and uh, right now that they have a grant, we'll be uh, replacing some of that equipment. Miracle Recreation, and hopefully that's something we can get done this year. Um, you know, next year, if the worst case scenario, but I'd like to try to yeah, get that done and, and get that new playground equipment done. New playground equipment doesn't uh, escalate. So once you, as soon as you put in new playground equipment, now you have to meet all the new BDA requirements. So you have to have a certain type of uh, ground surface material and other stipulations. So again, we're talking about the price going up. It's not as easy. It's just, okay, well, we as citizens, we say, okay, there's a slide, there's a, some swings, there's some monkey bars, and some other things. It's not as easy just out in the old a lot bigger uh, scope uh, uh, project that goes on there. And then we have $100,000 from the Erie County Community Development Block Grant, which is for municipal, uh, for municipal ADA modifications. This is another one, uh, actually just that, this is like a new change just as of last week. Uh, the, the bids that are coming back for the North Boston Park, if you your children playing uh, soccer down North Boston Park, you can have a chance to go down to North Boston Park. There's been, the, there's the building down there that really the town uses as cold storage. It's, it's old, uh, it's a basically a shell for all kinds of purposes. We had the engineer out uh, this past March uh, on assessment of the concrete pad. The concrete pad would not support, it's not worth putting money on, on top of the new, uh, on that concrete pad for a new structure, new building, new ADA facilities. Didn't they have the concrete pad fail in roughly eight to 10 years? So again, prices went up, exceeded that, uh, that price point, and I've been working with Erie County to change that money over so we're going to be allocating that money towards our elevator, which is also old and dated and about the same age as our town hall. Uh, the reason that we're going to be doing that is if anybody wants to try to use the elevator tonight, you can. I can assure you that it's safe, but uh, it has been leaking oil for some time. It's an it's a old Dover elevator, and the problem with the old Dover elevators is on the, if everybody can see me, this is the wall, the front wall where the door is. The car hangs on the side and it hangs on the back brackets. There's no back support. So what happened is that in time, like everything else it wears, it's hung off. It's now not plumb or, or straight. It's worn on that seal. Bad design by Dover back in the day, uh, but that seal was referred to as an inverted seal or an inverted jack, depending on who you talk to. What that means is that instead of the seal being at the bottom on a new elevator today, where once there's a leak, uh, the, the leak at the bottom, there's essentially a, a well there that would collect that oil that goes into almost like a, there's like a sump pump mechanism, pumps the oil into a bucket, you can pump, dump it back into your, your reservoir, and you can reuse the oil. So it's not really like a pretty simple system. Well, the design flaw is, is that there's an inverted jack that seals at the top. So every time it leaks, it leaks down and it actually floods the inside of the, the well. It's a concrete well, but nonetheless, it's been a problem. Uh, cost of the taxpayer, I truthfully did not want to get into the weeds on that. If anybody wants to reach out, they certainly can. But this has been an ongoing expense for the municipality for some time. Uh, you know, the cost of oil to replace the oil, the cost to clean it up, and every time that it's out for service. So this is just something where we're, in my opinion, bleeding money, and it needs to be addressed. So that's a nice to do. That's a must do, especially with ADA compliance. We have a town hall that does not have a ramp at the front of the building. So if anybody comes in through the down, uh, the downstairs door, it doesn't have a way to get upstairs. So that, that becomes the priority over, unfortunately, the, the building. So I'm working with Harry County on that, like I said. Uh, it's restructuring some of the list of our fees. Our fees haven't been changed in many years. Uh, and uh, anyway, you can see where some of this, I'll just read these off. It's a little easier to see. Yes, so this is collected through last month. So we have uh, under clerk fees, we have 90, uh, $981. Dog control fees, currently it's up at $100. Uh, use of facility fees, that's when the uh, resident comes and wants to rent out our, our property, line shelter, otherwise, we're looking at $900. Uh, 
zoning income, we've got $1,050. Games of Chance, only 33. Dog licenses, $1,652 coming into the town. Uh, under refuse licenses, we have 300. Building permits here, uh, this is a, the, on, on par. Uh, we're a little behind, uh, from what I've been told, we're a little bit behind last year's numbers, but building permits uh, continue to come in. We're looking at $8,553. And under license permits, we're looking at $75. And refuse and garbage charges, we're looking at 182. Ports. This is a JCAP grant that uh, actually our port offices, and uh, I helped them out with it. I couldn't really be too involved because it's a JCAP grant. Uh, but we, we, we work together on this. If anybody's been to a, a recent town, uh, town board meeting, all of the new chairs that you see in the picture here uh, are all the new chairs. We had the old wooden chairs, and people will complain for years that they were uncomfortable and they had wicker bags. And, while they were nice, uh, that was one thing that, that came up. Uh, I think our court offices identified this grant. So we sat down with a grant writer, not, you know, noticed this opportunity, and uh, decided to take advantage of it. So uh, it did not cost the taxpayer anything, and uh, we just recouped, essentially recuperated our tax dollars and we got some seating in the, in the courtroom. It was a lot more comfortable for everybody that uh, didn't have to down. Fines collected, um, the town portion of the fines collected coming into the town in January of this year, 2019. We have $13,425. In February, we collected to $12,235. March, we collected $14,672. And then in April, we collected $11,845. So, so far, year to date, we're bringing in roughly $52,177. And the only thing that they uh, the grant did cover in addition to the court proceeding was a new cash box. Yes? Well, that, that is something that the board and I need to decide what we're going to do with uh, it. Uh, that's part of the capital asset plan. And uh, so that part of the capital asset plan, we could uh, either pay for the bid, we could sell them. There's, there's options out there. That is, that, that's part of the discussion. <coughs> the assessor's office, uh, actually there's some changes coming in, just so all of you know, when it comes to uh, your, your star exemptions. Uh, the assessor's office, they have all the uh, New York State requirements and deadlines uh, for, for this year. Uh, they're currently finalizing the 2019 assessment role. Uh, the assessor, of course, is responsible uh, for the property tax exemption and the STAR program, including the cost of the repo applications. Uh, they also make the assessor maintains the escrow accounts and bank loans for property tax owners and uh, for property owners. And then, uh, they also daily updates of inventory to the properties within the town. Those daily updates can be anything from, let's say, Jason, Jason Keating decides to do an addition on the side of my house. I, I go to the building, uh, uh, the code from the building uh, rent office, uh, slash code enforcement, to show them my plans, the, the engineering plans. And if I'm expanding my, my house, there'll be what's referred to as incremental assessment. That's where the assessor makes those uh, adjustments. Uh, won't go as quick as on the fly, but uh, as quick as soon possibly can. She does a great job at that. Uh, uh, the assessor does continued education uh, to the taxpayers to enhance their understanding of the assessment office, changing equalization rate, which is something that uh, comes up a lot, and then also the changing star exemption. So star exemptions is something that's big for this year. Uh, just so you all know, again, if you have not heard, you're hearing it here, here tonight, is that uh, the, they're from right straight out of Albany. Our assessor's office is receiving uh, notifications depending on the income and other guidelines. And I won't get too much of the weeds on as we still want to speak to what she can or you can reach out to her. But essentially, depending on income guidelines, the Albany will reach out to the assessor's office in any municipality and tell you, you don't you do not qualify for the star exemption anymore. Uh, they don't always give you a reason uh, for that. It's just something that the assessor is responsible for doing. So please do not blame our assessor for that. This is coming out of Albany and it's nothing to do with the town board, the town local government. It's just going straight out of Albany. There's some pretty big changes coming with the star exemption and uh, that's just what we're, what we're currently dealing with. Um, there's also uh, continued professional education on Sue also, and uh, Ashley also do their professional education on appraisal principles, uh, changing uh, legislation with regard to the STAR program, and also commercial uh, evaluation. <coughs> Under code enforcement, uh, code enforcement has maintained inspections for new constructions throughout the town. They inspected commercial and residential permits, and uh, uh, they work with the Erie County Clerk in West New York Law Center on Zabi properties. Uh, County Clerk Mickey Kearns, myself, and actually one other supervisor, we, we kind of came through and actually the town of Boston is actually an under pilot program. Um, many other municipalities are starting to jump on, but actually when I came on as a supervisor last year, I, I partnered up with the County Clerk in West New York Law Center. 
we have zombie properties. What a zombie property is for the town of Boston is a particular uh, from a home that's either in uh, about to go into foreclosure or already in the foreclosure <coughs> process. Western New York Law Center provides to the municipality free legal counsel and assistance to fix these properties up. So if you were a, a homeowner and you had an adjacent property to you, to keep the valuation of your house up and not have a dilapidated property, uh, there's a process for that. Zombie properties have been working on uh, specific resolutions and uh, legislation to try to clean up any zombie properties. So that's, uh, that's something that the, that the code enforcement office needs to work with us on because they are the ones to be going out doing uh, building inspections or in some cases issuing notifications to the, uh, the bank um, through what's called the spendings and whether it's uh, uncut grass, uh, you know, uh, broken windows, and uh, you know, I, I, I won't, I'll be polite, I, I, won't use, I won't bring out a name, but I think we all can relate to a property in town right now that needs, that needs some love. And uh, it, unfortunately, it does not fall into that category just yet. But mm -hmm. could it? The answer is yes. So that's where we're at with uh, zombie properties. Uh, right now, for the number of permits issued in 2018, uh, is 109, <coughs> and the fees collected through the Public Enforcement Office is 23,398. Uh, we're looking at, you know, we look at this year, 2019. We've got two permits that were uh, issued. The total fees collected, 171 dollars. February 2019, another two, and of course, the slope of building season. Those permits were $1,317. March 2019, five building permits. Of course, we've got that thaw. Foundations are starting to go in. We've got $1,413. April 2019, again, building season. Here we go. 15 permits, $4,714. Recreation. Uh, this is something that Tom and I went through last year. Uh, we made made the decision to switch over to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, the current rec program, uh, the way it was structured, the way the policies were, well, what policies there were, were structured, uh, we, the town needed help. And uh, when you looked at the timeline that we had to do it, didn't be compliant with some of the New York State requirements and laws, we made a shift and a decision to partner up with the Boys and Girls Club. As I stated at the town the Boys and Girls Club meeting, uh, if you weren't there for that, the, the Boston Boys and Girls Club, while it's partner with Orchard Park, we are our own complete separate entity. So the funding that is appropriate when you're looking at the budget, the funds are appropriate in that budget, that funding goes to our Boys and Girls Club. It does not go to Orchard Park. It's completely separate. They have a complete separate budget. Any one of you residents can certainly ask for that budget and show, show, you know, ask for the expenses, and they can show that and prove that information. Uh, but it, I think so far it's been a great partnership. <clears throat> and uh, so we have Boston chapter. The kickoff event was June 18th, 2019. It was well attended. Uh, for, for myself, I won't speak for other board members that were there, but I can tell you that probably, to, to me, the, the best uh, response I received from a family of three was that the Boys and Girls Pro Program that we brought in here to the town of Boston saves them a little over $4,000 a year in, in child care. So, and that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's $4,000 back back in somebody's pocket, you know, with their household. So, so Jason, was, what is the contract with the Boys and Girls Club? It's a, a basically memo, memo of understanding. They handle all the recreation. There, there's no payment to them? There is a payment. The, the monies that were appropriated in the recreation budget uh, in past years, that money is. is so, how much is that? Uh, 70000 70, this year, and it's going to be uh, 100000 next year. So, in lieu of paying staff, you just pay the Boys and Girls Club? That's how that works? Correct. And then they, with those fundings, pay their staff? That's correct. Yep, they pay their staff. They do all compared to what was the town of Boston. If you look at the uh, state guidelines, so the, for the Boys and Girls Club, the town of Boston, uh, to have, have a summer rec program for the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, they do background checks. They do. They handle all of the HR. They handle all the payroll. They handle <coughs> all of the policy and procedure that I will stand here in front of all of you and tell you that it was very lax, if not non-existent. Uh, again, under an audit control as a town, that's something that we need to clean up. And I will leave it at just that, but there was a lot of struggle with that. And uh, if you look at this, if you follow the New York State Comptroller's Office, there are a lot of municipalities uh, that uh, basically recreation programs are low hanging fruit when it comes to an audit. Uh, whether it's theft, whether it's uh, uh, improper bookkeeping and other things, now we're contracting that, that out. And the best part, in my opinion, of the Boys and Girls Club, not only did I go there when I was a young child after my father passed away when I was young, but I can tell you that it's, it's a wholesome program. They offer uh, you know, after school program, they offer the summer program which our recreation program, and breaking it down in dollars and cents, take a look, if you do a look back, Boston Recreation Program had a gap from the day that your child left uh, school, there's a 
two week gap while the kids came out of school. So mom and dad had now find uh, coverage for that two for that two week gap there. They had a summer program, they had another two week gap while all the kids went back to college. So now that the, the new Boys and Girls Club program covers the day after the child gets out of school, the day before the child goes back to school. And then you're also getting an after school program now, which is something that Boston has never had before. And with enough demand, I won't, I won't speak for, uh, for Bobby, but uh, if there's enough demand, uh, we're open to the idea of a before school program. If we can support it, and it's something that the community wants, it's something we're certainly looking to do for, for the residents. Uh, you know, the, uh, in my opinion, it was, it was really it was the right move, and I have truly I've heard nothing but uh, positive feedback so far. It's a well-rounded program, and again, uh, from a liability standpoint, from an auditing standpoint, we are now, I can confidently say, we are compliant. And if anybody has any questions, uh, I'll put Bobby on the spot for a second, but Bobby is our, our, uh, our unit director here for the uh, town of Boston uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, chapter, and uh, I think him and uh, uh, Billy again uh, have done a great job at everything. So. Uh, enrollment right now for this year is, not, is currently not 95 members. Uh, we've got four junior staff members, uh, eight regular staff members, and one director. And of course, those numbers can change. And uh, you know, we can continue to grow. <coughs> Jason. All but one uh, counselor came back. Is now working for the Great point. Boys and Girls Club. Very good point. They they got, go ahead, please. They, they all got uh, first shot at those jobs for the summer, and the only one that didn't come back got a better job. So um, we were really happy to retain all those jobs locally for for the counselors. Fully agree. One of the things that actually Mike Mike, Mike is the lead out for the recreation department. One of the things that Mike and I had stressed. Uh, we had the very early conversations to see if this was even going to shake out the way we wanted, or what our account vision was, is that uh, we wanted a commitment that anyone that was in the rec program previously essentially had a first opportunity to go in. Because again, being a parent, having a young child, one thing that a child is not going to relate, they're not, a child is not going to pick up on rebranding. We as adults know what rebranding is. <laughs> Changing a name, you're putting on a different shirt, might say, Boston Recreation Program to now Boys and Girls Club Boston Chapter. A child is not going to truly know and understand what rebranding is. They're going to know who Jason Keating is. They're going to know Mike Reese. They're going to know Mike Smith. They're going to know Zach Smith. They want to make that connection. They want to feel safe and secure. That's what we want. And that's what we strive for. And we, we hit the nail on the head for that one. I think it was fantastic. And the person who uh, could not come back, actually, there's some consideration. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll jump into this, uh, get a little too little detail here, and I apologize, but the uh, for the for the Boys and Girls Club, there is a there's a unit committee, and that is made up of you, the taxpayers. It's your tax dollar. You know, everything that Kathy just asked about, with, with you know, when it comes down to the dollar, it's your, your tax money. That unit committee allows you to be the steering committee of, of uh, guide the recreation program the way you want it to be, you know, see how you want it to be ran. Uh, so it takes, and I will go out on the limb and say, it takes the politics out of it. It's not about whoever sits in the five chairs upstairs. These are our kids. And, uh, and that is one thing that I, if, it, if there's any one thing that I will say out loud and very proud, is that it takes politics out of it. The kids are there, they've got a great program, and I, and I, I personally can say I feel comfortable with that, and I think the parents 